here with Joanne Felice in front of the Noble Monument Grant's tomb. Joanne Felice is one of the leaders of Normal of Normal Women's Alliance New York City chapter, and we're here to discuss marijuana. That's right. Okay. My name is Paul Gilman, and welcome to the second episode of Weed Not Weapons. Hi, Joanne. And before we start, could you also talk, um, give us your other credentials? You're with the Art Project and Animation Studio. Hi, yes. I'm Joanne. Thanks for having me on the show, Paul. Um, so I've started off with the Normal Women's Alliance. Um, when I was living in Pennsylvania, um, my boyfriend, he had started a clothing line called Roll It. And uh, when he was starting it, he was really into the activist movement. So he already tried to find like different chapters or different people who's been in the organization. So he found Normal. They went to a, a, a meeting in New Jersey um, where they, you know, was hearing other speakers talk about what else we could do in the community. So he started a clothing line since um, a lot of our people, um, we love fashion, we love clothes. So he was like, why not put weed on clothes? So uh, he started doing that, and I was working as a, a CNA at the time in the hospitals. So I wasn't into what well, I looked at as, as drugs at first. So I wasn't into anything, alcohol even at all. Um, but I was working in nursing homes, and I was working with other nurses, and other nurses were telling me that they smoke pot. And I was like, what? You're a nurse. And you smoke pot. Let's hear it for <laughs> the nurses. Woo I was like, okay. My, my boyfriend smoked pot. You know, we watch movies, but... He would just smoke it and I would just be relaxing. But since I'm like, okay, and other nurses smoke pot, maybe it's not that bad. So I started researching about um, what's pot good for, cause like my mom smokes cigarettes. So I try to see, okay, what else could, you know, what else do I not know about things that could help besides that? So I started researching marijuana. I was like, wow, cannabis have a lot of medical like uses towards it. It's not just something that's cool that kids just think it's, let's just do it. It's like alcohol and no, it's actually beneficial. So I um, went home, I'm like, yeah, babe, I'm thinking I'm ready to try it out because I don't want to be judging people. Like, I, looked, I did the research on my own. No one's forcing me, but I want to try it with you for the first time. So that was, like, the first time I got into it. And ever since then, I wanted to, like, make sure everyone knew the good thing about it because, you know, I was looked at as the good girl or the, always doing schoolwork. I was the one driving people to the parties, never drinking. So now all of a sudden I smoke pot. <laughs> And I was like, what? So I like had to have good reasons why I smoke pot. I had little brothers, so I couldn't just do it because it was a bandwagon or just look cool. So I was telling everyone the good things about it and how, um, you know, sometimes you don't have to use it in wraps. If you want to do it even the healthiest, you know, ways, you could use bongs or edibles. There's, other, there's a whole bunch of different ways, whereas other drugs, you can't really put it in your Thanksgiving meal. You can't, you know, and everyone's going to have so, a good time. So, so you're for pot. But you don't advocate the use of blunts. Right, not not heavily. I want to really advocate, like, you know, you can find it in chapsticks. You can find it in lotion. You can find it in a lot of things that different so-called drugs aren't as useful. So, Well, can I say something along those lines? Like, okay, if you really want to smoke blunts, that's on you. Right. But all the cancer-inhibiting qualities of pot or marijuana or cannabis, whatever you want to call it. Right get negated when you mix it with tobacco right exactly so you're better off not using the blunts because if you want to if you're going to smoke pot you might as well smoke it out of a bowl bong, right that's different ways papers. but if you know if you're european or you come from the black community of and course. you're into the blunts you know we respect the cultural of diversity course. But give me straight up pot. Okay? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right, right. You can you can mix it up. You know, you could put it in your food. You know, yeah. you, you could do it. You could experiment. You could have fun with it also. Like that's a different ways you could not be so. Cause if you well, to me, I feel like if I s just stick with doing it one way, you you get used to it as if it is just a cigarette. And you don't enjoy. You build up a tolerance. Right. You build up a tolerance, and you don't enjoy other ways you can you know take it in, and you don't have to you know smell. You could be out in the open. And you could be eating your cannabis, but I just enjoy that there were so oh. many avenues about it. Well, if you're gonna cook, if you're gonna cook with it, you have to like kind of simmer it in oil because the THC is fat soluble. That's right. And if you just boil it, it's a waste. It's a waste. That's right. And about a week ago, I just took a little bit of pot and I simmered it in oil just enough 
to um, cover the pan. Then I strained it, used the oil on my eggs. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was stoned <laughs> for like five hours. Right, um, exactly, right. I was like, okay, so... Yeah, that's one thing about edibles right. is that it sneaks up on you. <laughs> it do sneak up on you. And you do have to be careful with edibles. Right, for real. Okay, so let's talk about the politics of this. Um, what made you get involved? Okay, so we understand your boyfriend is, you know, a pothead. Mm -hmm. And we salute that. I'm that's a pothead. True. You know, yeah, we right? use that as a complimentary term. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, wouldn't this be a better world if, say, like... Julianus or Jeff Sessions or Trump were all potheads. Right, and you can just be real about it. Because well, they would probably be having psychotic episodes and, uh, you know, like drowning themselves. So, yes, pot could <laughs> even improve that. Right. So, okay, so your boyfriend is a pothead. Yes. And you're going along. But you didn't just stick with smoking pot. You decided to get politically active. Right, that's right. And that's why you're on this show, right, because you're right. you're more than just someone sitting around there. You're actually, like, liberating yourself. You're that's part true. of the liberation movement. Right. Instead of waiting for other people to liberate, that's true. you're liberating yourself. So could you expound on that a little bit, please? Right, well, well I feel like... And any type of change, it's not going to just happen by, you know, just doing what you want to do and I'll be fine and you'll be fine. Like in any type of change in general, like you had to come outside, you had to make signs, you had to speak up and yell and, and you had to stay in the middle of the street to make change. So I, I, don't, I feel like the younger generation now are forgetting that if we need change, we need to be active because that's the only way they're going to take us serious because there's so much other things going on that they're, that they're not distracted by. So we need to, like, wake them up, give them a distraction. Like, for instance, like the parade we just had, which is always a great way to gather a lot of people who have yeah. these ideas about, you know, legalizing it. So I feel like it's powerful to come outside and show them how important you feel about it because when you're mad about anything else, that's the only way you're going to make change. It's to come outside, join the parade, or or go to the, or find out who is the local people in your in your community to to state write Senator, letters to exactly the state assembly person. Right, we have and there is the Marijuana Regulation Taxation Act. Right, in New York State, this show mostly focuses on New York State. You're a New Yorker. Right. You're from the Bronx. I'm from Harlem. Okay, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's don't right don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no okay. problem at all. You're from Harlem. We're in Harlem now, which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm a Queens boy, you know. Um, my grandmother was born in East Harlem. Mm -hmm. But oh, who cares about that? No, no. Right, New so York, we all New York family, so that's good. The state senator, the state assembly person in your community. That's right. The, New York State has a Marijuana Regulation Taxation Act. Right. And I recommend people read that right. you can go on the, the new york state assembly website or the senate and just go look at that bill find out what the good parts are right. what the bad parts are and then call your senator state senators state right because we have to bug them because they're worried about you know other little different things but if we're standing in front of their face like they have to pick priorities if we're not making them feel like this is a priority they're going to put it to the back and worry about all the other people who's you know who's making effort to make change of what they want so even though, like, it's not really affecting, um, it's not really affecting everyone that is affecting the same way, like, some minorities are being more affected about it. And that's why I feel like minorities need to speak up more because it is affecting us more. Well, you're actually the majority. The people of color in New York City that's are the right. majority. Exactly. I'm the minority. Me and Mike back there, we're the, we're exactly. the minority, you know. Exactly. And I feel like we need to speak up more because... Like if we're if we're the ones who being hurt by the situation, if we don't speak up, they're not gonna feel like it's not. We don't feel like it's a big deal. And since the money part and the time part that they're con they're consuming and it's only being targeted towards us, then there's a whole lot of other problems that's not being solved. Well, there's a Chinese sage who says, where there's oppression, there's resistance. <laughs> exactly. See. And instead of just talking about stuff, you know, like. Okay, I've met plenty of people who are like tough gang kind of people and everything. They're running around beating other people up in their own community over right. money and stuff. Right. They're, um, you know, doing shooting, getting shot, whatever, living. But they're afraid to stand up for their own community. Right. They're afraid to actually be the good person and just stand up to the police, go to the politician, make demands on them. And uh, that's... 
I don't know. Can you comment on that? Yeah, because I feel like I feel like they just feel like it's us against them. But in order to make the change, we have to be up in their face. Instead of running away from it, we're creating we're creating bigger problems because we're we're telling them it's okay for it to be legal, and we rather you know play the black market game. Right. But we don't want to play that black market game because that's just running in circles. It's like how we was talking about um, Michelle Grant and her Michelle, book about Michelle Alexander. Uh, Michelle Alexander and how um, she was talking about the Jim Crow, and it, f- it still feels like the Jim Crow is. Um, um, error is still going on because all they replace the slavery and all the racism they just replace it with criminal acts or you know not abiding by the law so right. we're gonna do what we want to you but the law was made by man and we're not living in those days anymore so but if we're not gonna stand up and talk about those changes then it's not gonna happen so, right so instead of relating to the business part of american capitalism you're relating to police law enforcement. Exactly. So you have a, a relate. So your identity is defined by your relationship to the police. Exactly. And the legal system, but not to the um, business community. Exactly. And that's one of the big tricks of advoca- advocating for the black market. Right. Exactly. You know. So um, then that's the other thing with the marijuana regulation, the Taxation Act. There's a clause in it that encourages women and um, people of color to get priorities in whatever new licensing schemes they come up with. It's very vague clause. They don't say how they're going to do that. But that's one of the things we wanted to happen is that once marijuana becomes legalized or cannabis, I'm sorry, cannabis becomes legalized, we don't want the same players that got rich off the prohibition and the incarceration of black and Latino people to continue getting rich exactly. off it. We want this, those people who suffered the most from the drug war right. to benefit the most from post-prohibition. Right, and they put all those business, how you was talking, they put all those, if you want a company, well, you have to do this. And if you want a company, you have to do this. You have to get an LLC and you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. But there's already people who has a foot in that way. Right, and they, and like, for instance, um, the former Speaker of the House, Boehner, he was always against marijuana. He was always against its legalization. Now, he's no longer Speaker of the House, Republican, and he is on the board of directors of a, of a cannabis company. Right, exactly, because of the business aspect. That the the, the cap, his, cap, his, cap, capitalized one. Yeah, capitalized, but meanwhile, he should be paying reparations and not profit, profiteering off Right. It. Okay, his daughter did marry a heavy-duty Rastaman, from Jamaica, <laughs> that's no excuse. You're against it, right? Maybe the daughter and the Rastaman can have the business, right? But you're not supposed to profit. You're sounding they're, hypocritical. Yeah, well, when they put, they could use the profits from the business to put him in the old folks' home, right? Feed him cat food, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Because of all of this misery they inflicted. Uh, C- Curtis Sliwa spoke yesterday at the pot parade at the New York City Cannabis Parade and Rally. And he was always against marijuana. He gets shot by the mafia, and now he's a big drug addict. He's bragging about his being a drug addict, and now he wants to smoke medical marijuana. He says nothing about legalizing pot. So right. we're, we're winning, we won, the, we won the war. We won the war of independence, the revolutionary war, the war against imperialism, in other words, we won the war to make marijuana or cannabis legal. Right. And that's one of the reasons why we're sitting next to General Grant's tomb. Right. Because this was the war of liberation for black people. Right. And that's an example to show that we can fight and make a change. We just have to do it together. And people just feel like it's impossible because, yeah, you by yourself is not going to be able to make the change. But us together will be able to make the change. That's right. And black people, when they were enslaved, did not accept their slavery passively. Right. You had Harriet Tubman. You had a Sojourner Truth. You had Nate Turner. Whole rebellions, you know. I mean, exactly. they were afraid. You had uh, John Brown. Right. They went to battle singing. The battle hymn of the Republic was about John Brown and revenge for hanging him. Right. For liberating people. And that's why we've been trying to turn that, you know, instead of the black on black crime, 
right. with, with, with how they modernize it with the gangs and, and things like that. But they just understand we're just going through poverty and we can't sink into, OK, abiding by the laws. We have to fight against right. the laws. No, don't say I don't like the laws. I'm going to just be here and be this low. No, get up. You want to fight, fight against the law. Right. Well, both Martin Luther King and Malcolm X did that. Exactly. The most glorious, heroic people throughout black history in the United States is people like these. Right. And we're encouraging all of you out there, black, white, brown, yellow, whatever, red, to be um, Malcolm X, to be Martin Luther King, to be John Brown, to be a liberator. Right. Don't be scared to speak up. Yeah, that's, yeah, big, tough gang guy. Anyone could do that. Right. And then, you know, and then next thing you know, you're 25 and face life in prison for something stupid. Right. So we need to fight against the laws. Stop trying to get around the laws because, yes, it's been set here. But if we don't like it, we have to get up and speak about it, show that we don't like it. And look at Nelson Mandela, 30 years in prison. Anyone for arrested for pot is a political prisoner. Right. He gets out, or 27 years, whatever it was, then becomes president of the country. Right. That could be you out there. Right. <laughs> That's true. Because we need volunteer more. you. Right. <laughs> That's true. Because we need that. We need that. We need. We can't just be hiding, and we can't just be feeling like, oh, someone else will do it, or someone else is going uh, will go speak, or, or there's enough of them. Like, no, it's not because the, it's still going on. So obviously, we need more. We need more people to speak up because it's affecting us. And even if we don't do it, it's going to affect the generation behind us. And we're going to be going backwards if we don't do something about it. That's right. And so, um, okay, I don't know. What else? Oh, you want, how can we get in touch with um, the normal Women's Alliance New York City chapter? Um, well, I'm going to start um, throwing more events like upcoming summer. I'm going to put on some events where women could come together since um, I've seen a lot from women's grow and, and how like women do make a big impact. So I'm going to try to find other like-minded women since I started off. I already knew that, oh, since nurses, that's the one main people that I thought, you know, were the nurture of the world and, and you know, they were very smart. If they could smoke marijuana and find the benefits about it and they work in the health system. So so it must be something bigger with marijuana that we need to get out there. So I want to see if other women like that can speak up and the same way she influenced me, I can influence other women and we could get together and we can see if we can make a change. Well, the American Nursing Association was one of the first health professional groups to come out for legalized see? medical marijuana. Exactly. And I, and I went into the nursing field thinking because, you know, I just want to help people. I went into that field and then now I found like art. Art is another therapeutic way to like help people instead of, um, you know, just, you know, fixing up someone physically. Maybe you can use art since the world is being very technology savvy now and I'm trying to figure out how to apply what I've always loved to do like draw and painting and apply it to like with a message so since people are always on their phone or visual so that's why me my boyfriend and another co-worker of ours we created this company called we are the art project and uh, you repeat that again it's the art project our Instagram is we are the art project um, and we just try to like apply things that are going on in life into our art. So a lot of our friends have been heavy in the activist movement. So we've been doing a lot of um, animation with, with we planned character design. But we're trying to really dive into the fact that our generation can get into animation. And since you can't afford it, since it's like, you know, the new artistic wave, but we want everyone to have a voice in it. And since moving images is like, it captures, it just captures just your, it just captures your moment for a while. Okay. And then we have messages that you could get through it. You could add in music, clothes. There's a whole bunch of different art you can add in animation. So we felt like that was another way that we can help people and keep them interested since it's something cool that they like. So let's try to give them a message within something cool. Okay, Joanne Felice. I, um, as a woman, like the cannabis movement tends to be male dominated. Yeah. Could you talk about your experiences dealing as with a woman, as being a woman in this movement and 
has it been harder? Have people accepted? You? Have the men accepted you and been cool, or have they been jerks or whatever? Uh, I feel like well, the cannabis movement, everyone in it so far has been like the greatest people ever. There haven't been any discrimination against women, and I don't know if it's because you know Mary Jane is a woman, and um, no, <laughs> but um, I've gotten a lot of love. There's no type of discrimination like that. I just want more um, like black women and more other people of color to understand that is as us who's being heavily you know attacked and it's maybe because we don't have much stability like our own homes and we can't only smoke in the house or maybe because we have we're living with a lot of people in the house and we don't want to you know be a fringe upon their freedom and maybe that's why also but i just want people to speak up more and since we're the ones who are being attacked from it and women since you are the moms of men who are heavily being attacked you know, stop attacking your son or using the old morals to punish them because the world is, is harder on the men. So, like, if we women are the nurturers, they'll listen. I'm not saying that they'll listen to us more, but if we accept it more as moms and nurses and, you know, like, we're the ones who nurture babies. If we're telling people it's okay, I feel like people will accept it more. Do, do you have a message for the old anti-pot church ladies? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I mean I met a lot of them and I feel you like <laughs> what, what, what? and I feel like they're just they they just on us we don't hate them I just feel like they just um they just mix religion and the morals too much because some some would tell you their grandma used to smoke pot and it wasn't a big deal and they loved it the only reason what made them start changing their mind is just because the law said so. Right. It, 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 it's not like, it's not like, you know, sorry for the people who have to be on crack and stuff like that, but it, it, it's a different experience. Well, and they associated with crack right, and they, alcohol and the other drugs. Right, and then once you sit down and you break it down, they know it's totally different. It's like when you think about it, even the stereotypes aren't that bad about Oh, it makes you laugh, which is not a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, it makes you hungry, which is not a bad thing. I know people who has bad appetites because they're so stressed out. Yeah. Like even the stereotypes are not bad. Like if it makes you lazy, that's why I don't I don't like kids doing it too early. Right. Because I stop my brother from doing it too early. Wait till you have enough money to afford it and your brain capacity could afford it. It slows down time and you think you're mature when you're not. It's just slowing down time right. like for you at the moment. But other than that, I just feel like people are just stuck on just because the law said so. And people have been living their life that way, like, for a while. Just, you know, just to just stay under the radar, not get no one mad, don't make no noise. But we have to change that because your kids, just because you abide by the law, your kids want to be free. Well, They're and, being attacked. And for the record, a lot of these um, church people, la ladies and men, they've all had um, relatives or or um, even children or parents that have been through the legal system, and some of them are the bedrock of the um, ending the drug war. Right, right. You know, some of them, they found all kinds of organizations right. that support um, friends and family behind bars. Right. But uh, yeah, I was just talking to a narrow segment that we've had to deal with. You know, when I ran for office, is like the church lady say there's a certain church lady segment who are heavy duty voters that are anti-pot because of all the propaganda but i didn't want to throw out a stereotype i right. but it is true that that is a voting block right right and that and that's all that's about they've been so they've been well, so well, strict on the law yeah that voting block is kind of shrinking right. you know i mean it's overwhelming in new york state now they say about 61 to 70 percent of the people are for full legalization. Forget about marijuana. Yeah. Forget about medical. Yeah, forget about medical because it's still limited to people who got health care. Like, so what about medical? Like, right. It's they still want, they want to smoke pot. Right. People like pot. Right. And it's been here before we was here, so that's one thing. A lot of other drugs are man-made. Like this was here the same way we popped up out of nowhere. It was here, so there's no way yeah. you can say. 
something that grows like that. In fact, we popped up alongside pot. Right, exactly. So how are we gonna? How are you gonna take that away? That's wherever there was human beings, there was marijuana. Exactly. Right, and it was too many things connected to racism when I was researching it about how they thought marijuana makes you know white women wanna have relations with black men and marijuana make the black man feel more superior than the white man. It was so. Or uh, marijuana is the Mexican drug. Right. Or this, and I read the Reef of Madness is a whole bunch of agenda pushing that they did, and you know we can't let them continue with that because it's just an agenda that they're trying to push. When they're indoors, they're doing everything they want to do indoors because they have money to pay for their own house indoors. Right. They do anything they want to do. Well, they do it outdoors, and they don't suffer the same. Exactly. And how could it be? A, that's one thing that makes me mad. How could it be okay, like if uh, California can smoke over there and we can't smoke over here, like? I don't get that. Like, how could the state say yes and the federal say no? Well, like that—that's—that's that's backwards. Even in California, the feds will still bust people. Exactly. Free Dana Beal. Dana Beal. Free Dana. Free Dana. <laughs> he was arrested recently again. He only had what 26, 21 pounds of pot on him, and he's in North. He's in Northern California. The feds got him, you know, for crap and. uh but it's, 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 it's annoying because it's like, I can share anything, right? Why can't share my weed? Why can't, sh I can share gas, I can share my car, like, but no, you can't share your weed. Say you're cooking, like, what's your favorite thing to cook? Huh? I like to make um, salmon croquettes. Okay, say, can you share your salmon croquettes? Yes, I can share my salmon croquettes there with you everybody. Go. <laughs> oh man, you should cook them, make pot salmon croquettes. Oh, that would be good. Oh man. You gotta become a professional butter maker. Yeah, no one will ever leave your house. <laughs> but yeah, that's just the one thing that does, just doesn't seem fair. And it's crazy that we're like really living in that confusion of where federal right. and state, this is the only thing you guys don't agree on? Okay. But, well, well, they did that in the Civil War. Yeah, so. They did that in the Voting Rights Act. You know, that's. That's the history of America, the struggle between local and national. But now all the all the fascists are for um, federal rights, whereas in uh, the civil rights movement. Right. Here, the, to the bell is tolling for you, Jeff Sessions. <laughs> you know, now all the fascists are for federal rights and all the anti-fascist, pro-pot people are for states' rights. So that whole state versus doesn't fall along neat ideological lines yeah so but instead of but i but there's a lot of frustration and i try to tell people you know let's channel that frustration somewhere like you channel it on your family you channel it on like your own people like right. get up get angry go scream in the street go in front of the congress building or something like channel it differently yeah. but it's, call them up right so okay um there's in there there's a lot of discussion on the effects of the war on pot on black and brown people um you've had your own personal experiences especially living in harlem could you yeah like i feel like a lot of times a lot of times even you walking around in your own neighborhood the the police don't feel like you're just in your backyard so like there's plenty of times like if we'll come out for a joint or come out um, to just have a conversation, going to the grocery store, coming back from the grocery store, you know, spark up uh, a clip of something that we was just smoking or something. And like this one past incident, like we're just having a conversation and police just assumes, you know, they just, you know, we're, we're breaking the law or doing whatever, but we're just in our backyard. But they'll run after you and, and, and try to make you scared to the point where like you have to look at them like why what do you mean why am i running after you there's a reason why i'm running after you. there's already things in the in the news that you guys put, like attack black people so that's why i'm running because you're scary and i'm not doing anything wrong but you feel like we're doing something wrong so even if they even if they arrest you and they don't have any evidence like how the situation where we were smoking we didn't even have the blunt on us and they still arrested us and they didn't have no evidence and now even having to deal with the courts the courts is just trying to force you to take pleas so that's one thing i want to tell people is you never have to be forced even though i know you feel like you're poor and you have to just take on what they do but they will attack you just because you're black and brown now even if you're outside they even put in the paper that they're professional at knowing what it looks like 
crime is. Yeah, because they <laughs> smoke pot themselves. Yeah, so how could that even be written? I like, Even when I research it, they're professionals at knowing what it looks like. Like, if you're not a sociologist, which is also a problem, I don't understand how they could be, you know, you know, have empathy for anyone. I don't feel like... Well, police science po- is an oxymoron. Exactly. You know, they use, because of the police, they're claiming that, you know, all the mis- misogynist, racist things that it, you know, makes black men want white, blah, blah, right, blah. Right, right, exactly. That comes from the cops. That comes from the police, Now exactly. they're experts on people sitting there smoking and that, pot. Exactly, and like... And but I'm in my backyard. I don't, no one comes and disturb me. I'm not disturbing no one's <laughs> Their peace. Their opinion is no more valid than anyone exactly. else. Exactly. They're just regular guys. Exactly. And most of them are badly educated. Very badly racist. educated, just not for all, money. But most of them. Yeah, but, and especially since they're seeing their fellow officers, you know, not being persecuted as anyone else would kill someone. I don't care if you're a police officer and you kill someone, you should be punished the same way anybody else would be punished. But the way that they're pushing that agenda that they're getting off yeah. is is an agenda and they don't even see that that's an agenda you're making the police feel like oh it's not that bad to kill a black boy it's not that bad to oh accidentally get it wrong and i shot by accident but oh I, oops i thought so that's not okay but that's the agenda that's being pushed right now and that's way back from the founding of this country with slavery exactly and they turned that, that's it. the michelle alexander paradigm exactly from slavery to jim crow to the drug war right they turned they turned racist things or racist acts into oh criminal acts yep. and that's all that they did because they know we're poor so why why if you have money you can set bail why does it matter if you kill someone but if you have money we'll let you go for a little bit so why does any of that have to do with money? Oh, if or you did something wrong, but if you pay a tick, if you pay us, you didn't do anything wrong now. But why does money have to do with anything that right. I did wrong? And, you know we're poor. And we're talking about pot. Exactly. We're not even talking about like swindling people. Exactly. Or- Whatever crimes, you know, right. yeah, you need to prosecute certain crimes. But, uh, but, but the drug war actually, the drug war actually generates crime because now you have black market. And if these same black marketeers would put all their energies to legal businesses. Exactly. And if they fail, they're not going to run around shooting each other. Exactly, right. There's no territory, there's no control. Right. There's no worry. The penalty for failure in the black market is either long prison terms. Exactly. Or even a short prison term where... You know, you get discriminated in housing, right, schooling, right. jobs. Exactly. Or um, get killed in some kind of exactly, drug war, right. you know, inter-gang right. drug war. You it's know. a domino effect. Once so you do cool. that little petty crime, right. once they you stand up there and they say, this is not a crime, it's a violation. Okay, but right. now I'm still dealing with this. You, you, you're doing things psychologically to kids when you put them in handcuffs and then you put them in the back of the seat and then... Or their parents go right, to prison. And, right, and then you let them sit in there. You're still doing something to them, psychology, but you don't think it's a big deal. You're just in here for five minutes, buddy. You don't think it's doing anything to them, to their to their mind. And it's a domino effect. Then they hate you. And then, oh, the police walk around. Why do you hate us? Because you're walking around like you're superior and you don't understand. Like, when even when he arrested us and he's like, oh, it's just a ticket. But why you got to put me in handcuffs for just a ticket? Why you got to take my mugshot for just a ticket? Why you got to do this for just a ticket? Plus, if you had, like, legitimate businesses, okay, somehow it screwed up. You know, you didn't do a good job. Then they write a play about you. Exactly. (laughs) They do a TV comedy on you or whatever. You know, or you try again. Right. You know, okay, like they say, most successful business people fail two or three times before they succeed. Right. Because then you learn. So you have a legitimate thing, and you're not toxifying the community because marijuana or pot or cannabis is is basically good for you. Right. But, you know, and you're not, like, genetically modified or pot like Monsanto. Exactly. The real criminals. Exactly. And they're trying to make weed, they're trying to make genetically, genetically modified. modified weed. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. I cannot stand that. And that's huh. legal. And that's legal just because, and that's <coughs> why you know they want their foot in first. Yeah. They're going to wait, pull us all away, who, who's really passionate about it, and they want their foot in first. So when you, when you call your politician, okay. Right. 
So when you call your politician, tell them you want broad licensing, very little money to take part in it, right? And maybe subsidize people who suffered the most from the drug war, right? <clears throat> you could put all of those in the bill. When you call your politician up, tell them that's what you want. Right. That's true. <coughs> you true. know, don't be passive. Right. And then they give you a bill and you have to accept everything in it. Right. Some of the bill is okay. Most of it's pretty good. Some needs improvement. Right. Like it only allows six plants. Mm-hmm. We want 99 plants. Right. <laughs> Six plants is an arbitrary number. Where did they come up with six plants? Because right. they want to make sure their Monsanto pot has right. no competition. Exactly. And they're, how you how you going to bring Monsanto pot into somewhere where federal is still <coughs> taking people pot? Oh, well, Monsanto owns the federal government. Exactly. They'll change so, the law so that they can meet the regulations where every small business people can't. Exactly. And that's the little trickery we're trying to avoid. Exactly. And it can be. So many people are negative about that. Read them, build the Marijuana Regulation Taxation Act. Underline it. Say what parts you like, what parts you don't. And then call your politician and talk about it. Even get a whole bunch of your friends together and go to their office. Right. And they have offices in every Senate and Assembly District, which means near everyone's houses. And this is everywhere, you know, every state has different bills. We have to just, I mean, I guess like the little leaders like us throw on events and gather people together, like try to have two cannabis parades a year or something. I don't know. We need another pot parade. Right. Less corporate dominated. (laughs) Right. Like, like bring, like just walk around, like have everyone join the parade. Like, it's just, people are just trying to be PC. Like everyone just trying to be good. Like. I'm not. (laughs) You're not. We're not. We're not. I want to thank Joanne Police of the Normal Women's Alliance, New York City chapter. Um, We're going to be putting up contact information pretty soon. We don't have it right now. All right. Because we're in the process of reorganization. Yeah, right. I'm going to start building up, so be on the lookout. If you'd like to join the Normal Women's Alliance, hit up Paul. You can hit up my Instagram at Lady Joe underscore yeah. and um yep and um if, if anyone if anyone have any ideas I'm open to listen because it's very it's very like brand new and I want anyone who have an input to feel like you could come and open your ideas up and you can say anything you like you could add any input I'm open to anything I'm very creative even if you're not even that open or into marijuana, if you like to help in any way, like I promise, you could come, you could um, get the inf- get my information from them, and like we could just start. What if you just into hash? Hmm. Can you show up? If what? You just into hash? Oh, <laughs> anything. <laughs> not crack. Nah, that. <laughs> not crack. No. No, that, you got to find your own thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, Paul's funny. <laughs> but weed, I'm sorry. No. Nah. <laughs> I'm just laughing. But yeah, guys, but we have to make a change. And I feel like um, there's not a lot of women in in the industry. And I feel like our voices, um, people take it serious because we're the ones who nurture kids. We're teachers. We're nurses. And I feel like if we open up and let the world know it's okay, like, they have to listen to us because we are Mother Nature. No. (laughs) Thank you, Joanne Felice. I'm Paul Gilman. This has been another episode of Weed, not weapons. Not weapons. Woohoo! Woohoo! Okay. I'm in front of the National Monument, Ulysses S. Grant Tomb, and I have a message for you, Jeff Beauregard Sessions. You lost the Civil War. Get over it. And you know what else? You're going to lose the Cannabis War, too, because we are going to legalize marijuana. You hear that? <laughs> Woo! <laughs>